and I hope that you are receiving the message of what true Christmas is. And we continue to sit in God's presence little for minutes, and we will celebrate and sing uh, unto the Lord again, and we'll have a time together in the fellowship hall also. You now the theme that we chose to for this uh, uh, celebration is about fear or about a fear not. You know we know that fear is a universal thing that there is. People are afraid of so many things. We all born with a certain fear, fear of falling, and a fear of loud noise. And as we grew up, that fear also grew along with us, based upon our, uh, our DNA, based upon our experiences, based upon our uh, you know, family, and all those things that comes along with us, that we grow with that fear also. Now, there are so many kind of fear that we see. You know, you go, you know, just don't do it now. Actually, you can Google it and see. There is something called the phobia list. So that fear goes to the next extent of uh, life, and that becomes you know, unreasonable. People fear of so many things that they fear. So the phobia list, there are hundreds of different kinds of fear that you see. And you start to call it as phobia because that uh, arrests people, that people are not able to function well simply because of this kind of fear that they have. The fear of flying, you know, fear of water, fear of dogs, Fear of husband, you know, fear of wife, some people, you know, and the fear of public speaking, you know, that is one of the fear that people have actually. One of the number one fear that the Americans have is to public speaking, and the people are afraid of public speakers also. And that is that we see. And when we say these things, you may think that actually one of the fear I think that grip in your heart when I am going to stop this. We have a morning service at 11 o'clock or here. So you can finish this and after the 11 o'clock service you can go home. That is what we are going to do here tonight. So we read many scriptures. I hope that we are reading in uh, different languages and many of you might have heard what we are reading. One of the scriptures that we read is from uh, Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 14. Luke chapter 2 verses 8 through 14. You can read the scripture. This is what we read earlier. I will read it one more time for you. This is what one of the stories or the events that was happened along with the, with the birth of Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 2, verse 8. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with an angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Now, what is the reason of our fear? I think that from the scripture, there we see and other stories that we read along with um, the Christmas story. The angel appeared to many people. We read earlier in this chapter, it says that the angel appeared to a priest called Zachariah. And it says that he was gripped with uh, fear. Then we see that there was the angel appeared to Mary, the mother of Jesus. She was terrified. She was afraid. What is going to happen to her? The angel appeared to Joseph, the father of Jesus, earthly father of Jesus. He was gripped with the fear. Here we read about the uh, shepherds. They were also afraid of something that is going to happen to them. There, there we read there are two words actually. One, is, one word is glory and the other word is fear. We can assume that there are two things that goes along with over there. Glory and uh, fear. Now what then is where the, the fear come from? The Bible says that fear was the result of the sin of people, of man. Fear was the result of disobedience of man. When God created man, this was God's perfect plan for man to reflect his glory, his excellence. That was God's design for man. That was the divine design that God has for human beings. But man sinned against God or rebelled against God or man disobeyed the commandments of God. The result that we read in Genesis chapter 3, there we read it says that in, in Genesis chapter 3 verse 9 through 10. But the Lord God called man, the first man, Adam. And where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid 
because I was naked, so I hide. So man was created in the image and the likeness of God, but man had the perfect union, communion, fellowship with God, and there was no fear at that time at all. But man rebelled against God. The result to us, the Bible says that man sinned against God, they fall short of the glory of God. That is what sin is. Sin is falling short of the glory of God. Ever since man is gripped with the fear, all kinds of fear that we see, as we mentioned earlier, all kinds of fear that people are, people are gripped with. So man tarnished the image of God, the glory of God in them. They forsake the purpose of God in their life. The result to us, fear. So that is where we see that man lost that relationship with God. Man lost the, the peace of God in them. And man lost something. They lost in their life. They, there was a gap that was built. There was a distance between God and man ever since. That is what that we all live in. The world that we are living in is with that gap. But that is the bad news that we see. People are gripped with uh, all kinds of fear. And there is a gap, there is a big gulf between God and man because of that. That is the result was is, is fear. But there is a good news also that we see in this Christmas story. That God sent his son to bridge the gap between man and God. God sent his son to bridge between the gap between God and man. That is the purpose of Christmas. That is the purpose of Jesus coming to this world. So there is not only the reason there is a problem of sin, but there is a remedy for our fears. That is what we read in Luke chapter 2, verses 10 and 11. I will read this one more time to you. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for I bring to you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born. He is Christ the Lord. The answer to human's fear the answer to the gap between God and man is here that we read, today a savior has been born. He is Christ Jesus. He is Christ the Lord. That was the answer to the fear that people and all of us have. That then we see the angels are singing. Soon after that announcement, the solution of human sin, the solution of that gap, the solution of that fear that was announced, that we see that that is the answer to the fear. That is the answer of the problem of human beings. That is a plan that God has ordained for the human beings. There we read then what happened. Then the angels, you know, exploded with a song. That is a song the children were playing there earlier over here. This is what they said. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. Luke chapter 2 verse 14. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to men on whom his favor rests. This, this little song that holds the answer to our problem. I believe that this is the purpose that Jesus came to this world. This is what it says. Why did Jesus came? The reason, one of the reasons is this. Jesus came to restore the glory which was lost. Jesus came to restore that glory which was lost. We see that there are hundreds of prophecies about the coming of Christ even before he was born. Hundreds of prophecies, hundreds of years before Jesus was born. That shows the, the glory of the sovereignty of God. God ordains everything and he knows everything. We see the sovereignty of God. We see that there was a virgin who was conceived by the Holy Spirit. The incarnation shows the glorious power of God. What God is going to provide for the human being. Jesus did not only born and die, just died, Jesus born to die, to die for our sins, to rescue us from our sins, rescue us from our selfishness, rescue us from our even our fears. So we see the glorious grace of God in this story over here. So when we see that Jesus lived and he ministered, he raised people from the dead, he healed the people, did all kinds of things. At the end of his life, this is what Jesus said in John chapter 17, verse 4. There we read that Jesus says that I have finished the business that God has, the Father has ordained me to do. And I brought glory because of that. That was Jesus' purpose to come into this world. And he says, I came to fulfill and restore the glory which was lost in the beginning. So that is the purpose that Jesus came. 
Jesus came to bring glory to God or bring back that glory back to God. The second reason that Jesus came, the Bible says over here, though not only that, that glory was coming, bringing back to God, Jesus came to give peace to man. Jesus came to give us the peace. And I know that Christmas is a difficult time to many of us maybe. Yes, this is a time of celebration. This is a time that we rejoice. But there, are, there is a time that many of the people, those who are suffering, those who are going through difficulties, they are, they are you know, thinking about the, the loved one they are lost. In the people, the things, that the horrible things they went through throughout this time. And there are so many other people like that. But here Jesus came to this world, not only to bring glory to God, rather Jesus came to bring peace to all of us. What kind of peace? You know, this is the world is offering us so many solutions to our problems. And it offers many pieces also. You know, one pe many people that we see, this is a time that people celebrate, drink, dance, do all kinds of things. So many people are indulging in those kinds of things. You know, they think that if you are intoxicated with the things, you will get peace. That is one of the ways that people try to find peace. There are other people, they try to, you know, make money. They think that financial security brings peace to their life. There are other people that we see that if there are independence, you know, we don't want to be dependent upon anything else at all. If there is independence, you know, we will have peace. We can do anything that we want to do with our own life. So there are so many of the things that people try to bring peace. But the peace that Jesus brings is none of those kinds of peace. Because all this peace that we mention is temporary. It will last. You know, after your hype, you know, what happened then? You have a hangover the next day morning. You know, this we have to do it again and again. People end up in addiction because of that, those kinds of situations. The what happens with the finance? We see that multi-billionaires, what happened to them? One day, they were up there. The other day, they lost everything. The Bible says about that, the Bible says that the wealth has wings and it will fly away. So it is not lasting at all. It is just for a minute. It is for maybe for a moment. It may be for a season. It will not last at all. But the peace that Jesus offered over here is this, the ultimate peace. That peace is that we will come to peace with our creator. Peace with the God himself. If you don't have that peace, all other things will not stay back at all. If you don't have peace with the God, you know, we will never be able to enjoy peace in ourselves. We will not have peace with the others because of that. Look at the world around us. Why all these atrocities that is happening? People are trying to kill each other. You know, people are killing even small children in the sake of God and their philosophies. Why? Why it is? Because they don't understand. They never made peace with the God at all. The first and foremost reason that we need to have to enjoy life is this. This is the purpose of God. This is the reason that Jesus came to this world to restore our peace with God. That is a peace that Jesus is offering. Not only that, the peace from our past. Now many of us have done many things in life and that may not be you know, good for us. And there are things that we are regretting. We are ashamed of you know, things that happened in the past also. The Bible so says, Jesus says, or well, the Bible says this actually in Psalms 103. It says that as far as the east is from the west, God has removed all our transgressions. As, to, as, as far as the east is from the west, our transgressions was taken away by God. Our past is taken care of when we trust in Jesus. We are starting with a clean slate. That is what the Bible offers. So we don't have to live in the regret. We don't have to live in the fear of guilt of yesterday's mistakes. When we trust Jesus, there is a new beginning that starts. Not only the peace from the yesterday's or the past, there is a peace that is providing right here, today, is in the present day as we live. Jesus said in John chapter 14, the peace I give to you, it is not the peace that the world gives. You know, Jesus didn't say that. The peace mean, doesn't mean that we have no problems or trials or difficulties in life at all. There will be difficulties. There will be challenges. There will be problems. There will be sickness. There will be sorrows. There will be lack in life. All those things happen. But Jesus offers us this. But he surpasses, you know, he transcends all our circumstances. And God's peace will rule and reign in our lives today, in our lives. Not only that, not only our yesterdays are taken care of, not only our today is taken care of, even our tomorrow is taken care of. That is the peace that Jesus is offering. In John chapter 16, 
verse 33 the bible says about that jesus says i have told you these things so that in me you may have peace in this world you will have trouble but take heart i have overcome the world i have overcome the world so before even jesus was born 700 years ago before jesus birth the prophet wrote like this in isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 in the words that we read in the beginning for to us a child is born to us a son is given and the government will be on his shoulders and he will be called wonderful counselor mighty god everlasting father the prince of peace why did jesus came jesus came to restore the glory which was lost restore the glory back to god and jesus came to restore or reestablish our relationship back to god restore peace with god and us now many of you may be going through you know fearful situations in life maybe you may be going through difficult challenges in our life you may be saying all kinds of things but tonight we want to tell you in the authority of god's word we want to say that let this christmas be meaningful to you not only just some fun not only just some songs not only just some food you know friends those kinds of things those are wonderful but that will last tonight and over here or this season what we are trying to offer what we are trying to tell is that to realize and understand why jesus came jesus came to restore the glory which was lost to remove that fear that we have in us not only really that to give you peace the peace with the god peace that everlasting the peace is going to last for ever that you are able to live above your circumstances above your troubles and trials and knowing that god the emmanuel is with us always god holds our hands this is what christianity this is what the bible offers this is not just a religion or a ritual rather this is a relationship knowing that jesus is with me always jesus the emmanuel the who become flesh he is with me always that is what the peace that the bible offers tonight i just want to encourage you and to invite you where do your fears will drive and all of our fears will drive to some places some people just stay up all night people do all kinds of things people become anxious because of their fear but where our fears will drive what happened to the angels that we see their fears drive them to christ they went to see christ in bethlehem tonight i encourage you and invite you come to bethlehem come to christ with your fears and i guarantee you that jesus will calm your fears and he will give you peace peace not only to the present day not only peace from the past peace even in the future also you will have a peace with the, the creator himself tonight if you think that you are inadequate to come before god you think that you are standing so gap a person like me i will never able to come that is the very reason that jesus came he can boldly come before him you don't have to be perfect to come before jesus you know jesus came to people like us sin sick people like us selfish people like us wicked people like us that is why jesus came tonight if you think that you are worried and concerned about your future concerned about your finance about your job whatever that it is the bible says jesus would tell you tonight don't worry don't worry about tomorrow's tomorrow has its own worries our god the bible says that our god shall supply all our needs according to the of his glory in christ jesus tonight fear not god loves you fear not he holds your hands fear not he walks with you tonight so would you please pray if you never understood what christmas he really is i hope all these things what we are trying to tell and share together tell you that what christmas is christmas is god sending his son to bridge the gap between god and man christmas is restoring the glory which was lost christmas is giving peace of god in our lives tonight would you please pray as we are going to pray let us close our eyes for a minute as we are going to spend few minutes few more minutes singing few more songs and before we do so you know i just want to encourage you would you please pray all of you here we believe that we prayed for you for a long time and we didn't organize just a celebration just to sake of doing it there was a church there was a group of people faithfully and earnestly prayed for you every person those who entered in the sanctuary you know we prayed for you every day we prayed for you weekly we pray for you in every meetings actually so you are here in an answer to our prayer 
You are not here by an accident. God brought you here into his presence. This 2014 December, this Christmas season, we pray that this will be meaningful to all of you. This will be meaningful to all of you. You will, I don't know, you come with a fear in your heart. If you come with a lonely feeling in your heart, if you come with a lot of questions in your heart, oh, we pray tonight that the Holy Spirit will minister to you tonight. And you will know that the peace of God, that there is anxiety about your job, anxiety is about your relationship. If you are anxious about anything that in your life, would you please lay that before God? If you don't know how to pray, just open your mouth and pray this simple prayer. Jesus, I lay my problems, my greatest problem, all my struggles before you. I am afraid. I don't know what is going to happen to me tomorrow. I don't know how the things are going to turn around and going to go. Tonight, I just lay my burden before you, God. Do you want to pray that prayer tonight? If you never understood what Christmas is or why Christ came, remember this thing. This is the purpose. God sent his son to restore the glory that was tarnished in man. It was God's original design that we all will reflect the glory of God. But unfortunately, because of sin, because of rebellion and disobedience, because of selfishness, that was lost. But God didn't abandon because of that. He made a solution. The solution is to send his own son to restore the glory which was lost. That is why Jesus came. But we have to admit, as we have seen earlier, that we are lost. We are lost. That's all we have to admit. And you pray and you invite Jesus. Accept and surrender your life to his lordship. He will give and offer his peace to you. Let us continue to sing and sing from your heart and sing meaningfully as you sing tonight. And you will understand that why the purpose of Christmas. So would you please pray along with me tonight. As all of us are praying. You now there are people who are here to pray with you. Don't leave this place. Totally just have fun here. You now we are serious and we are earnestly praying that the Holy Spirit will speak, speak to our hearts, minister to our needs tonight. If you need prayer before you leave this place, please come, we pray with you. And it's a privilege and honor that we do all the time. We just pray together. That's why we come together. We are needy people. God will restore your relationship with God if you receive and accept and surrender yourself to God. That is why Jesus came to this world. Let us sing unto the Lord. Let us sing together and let us praise the Lord. Before that, let us pray. Father, we are grateful we can come together like this in your glorious presence. What a joy that it is, O oh Lord, to celebrate the reason that you came to this world, O oh God. We thank you that you came to this world to restore us and make us your children, O oh God. And so that tonight, Lord, we earnestly and humbly pray for everyone, those who don't know you, those who don't understand the purpose of Jesus come into this world. Tonight we pray that you open their hearts, O oh Lord. Lord, we pray for those who are afraid, those who are gripped with the fear with the various reasons. Tonight we pray, may your peace, the peace of God, that will reign and rule in the lives of people, O oh God. Those who are worried about their future, anxious about, concerned about their future. Tonight we pray, Lord, may your presence will hover over them. They will be filled, soaked by your presence, O oh God. We thank you for each and every one over here tonight. We believe that you brought them together. You brought us together in your presence of God. Continue to minister to us, we pray. We thank you for answering your prayer. In your name we pray. Amen.